Each One Teach One, directed by Leela Place, follows Jason Trias as he attempts to turn his life around after spending half of it incarcerated in the criminal justice system. While in prison, Jason discovers his talent for art and finds that it's a powerful tool for transformation and empowerment. After being released from prison, he finds redemption in working with youths in crisis and through art, tries to steer them away from the path that his own life took. It's been intense. The freedoms, every little single thing I appreciate. I mean, like, I called my girlfriend Patty the other day. Hey, Miha, you know, these yellow clouds are growing across the sky, and there's these little flowers caught up in the middle of them, and it's pretty, it's pretty. I'm gonna go take a picture so I can show it to you. I mean, it's, and she laughs at me, and she goes, man, you're so funny, and it's, and it's stuff like that that, you know, I learned to appreciate because I was deprived for so long. My father had alcohol and drug problems when I was young. Instead of father-son relationship, we had a friend relationship, and we would drink together and smoke weed together and smoke PCP together and sell drugs together and, you know, I mean, do a lot of stuff together that fathers and sons shouldn't be doing. And I started getting in trouble. I got arrested for small things. My crimes started to escalate in seriousness. It went from property crimes to assault crimes for beating somebody up to shooting somebody. I'm 27 years old now, and I spent more than half of my life incarcerated, either in foster homes, group homes, boys' ranches, juvenile halls, youth authority, state prisons. I was always intimidated when I first started drawing. A ballpoint big pen is all you can have in your cell when you're in the shoe. There's these little tricks that you learn in prison, like mixing ink with mayonnaise to get different colors or, you know, to get different shade and using baby oil to blend. You're drawing with pens. You don't have no erasers. There's no room for mistakes. If you got 90% of the portrait done and you don't wipe your tip, you could ruin the whole thing. One of the men that I encountered there really tried to help me out and school me. And he seen that I had this interest in politics and some of the progressive movements, and he fostered that. This guy asked me to look around. Did I want to be? You know, the old 40-year-old dope fiend coming in and out of prison on violations. And I didn't want to end up like that. Seeing something that I actually drew published in a little four-page newsletter, and I got a really popular response back, like three or four people wrote me back, and I was like, if I could do a drawing and get people to write me back, then I'll do them every week, you know, just to have some communication with people outside. Art and writing, it was my little tools for liberation. I remember like the first month I was out, I was so nervous. I felt like I was gonna throw up every day because everything was just so intense. It's hard. Sometimes I just feel like giving up. It's kind of like Alcoholics Anonymous, one day at a time. But instead of drinking, it's freedom, you know? Don't commit a crime, don't get caught up, don't do nothing stupid one day at a time. Control your anger. Stay in control, you know, pursue the things that you want to pursue. Take care of the things you got to take care of one day at a time. I began to realize that all the things that I had done had done nothing but destroy and, and make more filthy my own community, you know, and I felt like you're either going to continue to do the same thing or you're going to do something about it. You couldn't be indifferent about it. When I was released to, from prison, I was offered an opportunity of doing murals with the Youth in Crisis here in the Mission community, and I jumped on it. The most beautiful part, that's all the little ones coming up to you 
and hugging you and asking you if they could paint and saying what's up and kind of riding your car. The mural is an opportunity for us to engage these kids and give them another vehicle for expression. When you paint on top of it, then it'll come out right. <laughs> Wipe it off on your shirt. Wipe it off on your shirt. That's what it's for. Oh, you feel me? And don't trip if you mess up, because if you mess up, we just paint over again, all right? You know, I told the kids, yeah, you know, I went to the pen, you know, for ten and a half years, and their jaws drop, you know, and they're like, whoa, and they respect that immensely. They get to see an adult who has been through what they're going through. They've been to juvenile hall, I've been to juvenile hall too. I was probably in the same cell you were in, you know? You've been to Y, I've been to Y too. I was probably in the same bed you were in. You know, yeah, you t I'm telling you, you don't want to go to the pen and you don't want to be in the same bed I was in, you know? And you don't want to, you don't want to make that bed and have to sleep in it. It's my own redemption act, you know, because I served my time. And if, you know, they want to say the way that we repay our debt to society is by serving time, then I more than gave them back what I owed them. And now it's like, now I'm serving myself. This is how I'm going to redeem myself in my own eyes so that I can look at myself in the mirror and say, you know, you're not a hypocrite. You're not a fake. If you'd like to take a look at our playlist, click the box to the lower left. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, click the circle to the lower right. We really appreciate your viewership.